All right, today, to start off this lesson, I want you to try to answer this question in your notebook. What do you think? Is all radiation on Earth harmful? You've probably heard that word before, radiation. Um, a lot of times it has a negative connotation. Uh, do you think that all radiation is harmful or not? Take a minute, pause the video, and answer that question in your notebook. When you're ready, hit play again. We're going to talk a little bit about all this energy on Earth, starting off with where it comes from. In biology, you learned that all energy on Earth comes from the sun. And how does the sun get all of its energy? Well, the sun gets its energy through the process of fusion. And in fusion, what happens is you have two atoms in the sun, and the sun is so hot and has such high pressure that it can get those molecules and those, or I'm sorry, those atoms moving really, really fast. So fast that when they run into each other, they actually combine. So they go from being two atoms into one bigger atom. Now, when that happens, when those two atoms collide and fuse, hence the word fusion, it gives off a whole bunch of energy. Okay, so you have a whole bunch of fusion happening in the core of the sun, and because of that, all of this energy is being released, and that's why the sun is such a good source of energy. Okay, and this goes along with almost all stars. So fusion lets us get all the warmth and energy from the sun that we need. That energy that's giving off from fusion is then transferred to the earth. So it travels through space all the way 93 million miles to the earth. And when it travels, it comes in a wide range of energy levels. And that range of energy levels is called the electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic spectrum. <coughs> Here is what the spectrum looks like. So a whole bunch of different kinds of energies. Over here on the left, you have um, really high energy types. So you have gamma rays, you have x-rays, UV rays. As you move to the right, these um, rays are getting to be less and less energy. This little piece here that looks like a rainbow, that's our visible light. That's the energy that we can actually see. Then you have your infrared waves, your microwaves, um, your radio FM and AM waves, and your long radio waves. So highest energy waves at this end, lowest at this end. Here's a little better picture of what we see here. So your high energy rays again, all the way over here on the left, all the way to our lowest energy waves over here on the right. This little bit in the middle, which has been expanded so you can see it better, is the visible light. And visible light is really just the rainbow. So your higher energy colors, because they're closer to the high energy side here, is purple and it changes through all of the colors in the rainbow and your lower energy color waves are going to be red. All right. Couple things that you need to know about this spectrum that goes from gamma all the way down to radio waves, okay? Wavelength of the rays to the left, this end or the purple end is going to be shorter. As you move to the right, wavelength is going to be longer. I'm going to show you what wavelength is in a second here. Frequency the waves that are towards the left of this spectrum are going to be higher frequency. The ones towards the right end of this spectrum are going to be lower frequency. Okay. As far as energy goes, the ones on the left are higher energy, while the ones on the right are lower energy. And the higher energy a wave is, the more harmful it is. So the ones on the left, and you probably can't see this very well, but these are more harmful. And the ones on the right are less harmful. So you can write more and less. So what is wavelength? If you look at a wave, and this is how these energy waves move, it looks just like a wave like you would see in the ocean. 
we have some different parts of the wave. The top part of the wave is called the crest, and where it dips down, we call that the trough. Now, you take the distance between two peaks, or you could do two troughs. Any time it's the same place on the wave, it's fine. Peaks are the easiest. The distance between the two peaks is called the wavelength. Okay. Frequency is how often that peak occurs. So if we have a set time, let's say this is one minute, and picture this wave moving to the right just like a wave would in an ocean. Um, and each time that a peak passes, it's going to beep. This one's going to beep more often than this one, right? Because that peak is going to travel by us more frequently at a higher frequency than this one would. So the more peaks there are in that specific amount of time, the higher frequency that wave is going to have. So here's some different waves that you would see in the electromagnetic spectrum. Which wave would have the longest wavelength? Keeping in mind that wavelength is the distance between two peaks. Hopefully you said the gray one because the distance between the two peaks for this one is all the way from there to there. Which wave has the highest frequency? Meaning that the peak happens most often. That would be this dotted line down here. And which wave has the highest energy? That would also be the dotted line down here. The ones that look more like a more tightly coiled, kind of like a slinky, they're going to have higher energy. The more stretched out and relaxed it is, the less energy it's going to have. Or if you think about it, like you're swimming in the ocean. Which is going to throw you around more? A nice smooth wave like this or a really turbulent wave like this? This one's going to have a lot more energy stored in it. Toss you around more. For the last part of this, I'm just going to give you some information about the different types of rays that occur in the electromagnetic spectrum. You have a sheet that has some boxes. You can list the type of energy in the small part of the box and then list the facts that I'm giving you in the bigger part of the box. Now I'm not going to go through and read them all to you so I'm just going to show you um, my, with my voice not included. After, you, after I click through them all and you get to the end of this slide, if you need to pause the video to get them all written down, that's fine. And then you just move on to the next slide. Pause here if you need to get this written down still. So now that you have all this information about all the different types of radiation that we get from the sun, from gamma rays all the way to microwaves and radio waves, I want you to try to answer this question again. And if your opinion has changed, you can go back in your notebook and change what you've written. So is all radiation on Earth harmful? <laughs> 